everybody! Welcome to another episode of Bookmark. I'm your host of Sherry's Joy. I am half of the Diddy cast, and this is book four, part two of The Maid's Diary by Lorith Ann White. Thank you all for listening. I truly appreciate it. Um, before you continue, please take a pause, and if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to our uh, YouTube site. Like and subscribe. We truly appreciate all of your support and all of um, your listening and just hanging out with us and being part of the DigiCast world. Okay, The Maid's Diary is a psychological thriller. So before I continue with that, please know that this is a full-on spoiler um, episode. I will be spoiling. So if you do have any desire to read this book and you would like to not be spoiled, which I recommend, um, please pause right now after you like and subscribe and read the book. Or if you prefer not to read the book and you haven't listened to um, episode or excuse me, book four, part one of this episode, please um, go back and listen to that as I talk about the first half of this book. Okay, and I am continuing with the second. We have, I'm just going to sum it up real quick. Um, we have a murder. Dun, dun, dun. Um, the beginning of the book, it did start with someone in the trunk of a car and she was just very, very hurt. And she also, um, you know, was going in and out of consciousness and she could hear people in the car talking about um, what to do with her. It was all mumbly. So we have that. And we are in the second half of the book. So second half of the book is kind of crazy. So we learn more about everybody's background. So the main character, the maid, her name is Kit. We learn about her background and she is, um, you know, her mother has passed and we find out because she's, she snoops, she cleans houses and she snoops and she was snooping in the Rittenberg's home and she found a safe with all of the information in there that pertained to her background um, of what happened. So when Kit was 16, we aren't clearly sure how old she is now, but when she was 16 years old, she was, um, she lived in a, a, a ski village and John Rittenberg, he is uh, an Olympian, a champion, a downhill skier, and he was the fastest downhill skier. And he was part of a ski team for the Olympics. And, um, she was 16 years old and she was, you know, being from a ski resort, you know, you kind of know winter sports. <laughs> and so she was very, very much uh, idolizing John and, you know, she had his poster and her locker at school and she was just, you know, really into him. She thought he was cute and all that stuff, you know, crushing on a celebrity. We all do that even now at, you know, an adult. <laughs> so anyway, so she was crushing on him and everything. And the, the team was in her village or in, you know, the resort town. And they were out at a, like a, the ski lodge club. And she was chubby back then and everything, but she still idolized and they knew it. So what happened was she was drugged and then taken to a hotel or a room or somewhere and John raped her and the entire ski team raped her and her um she ended up being pregnant and the mother her mother you know was like what in the world are we gonna you know so they were blackmailed and um they were blackmailed by Daisy, John Rittenberg's now wife. Then they were boyfriend, girlfriend. So they were blackmailed by her and the mother, it was actually the parents that were doing all of the work. So Daisy's mother went to Kit's mother and was like, Hey, we'll give you $500,000 or, you know, $5,000 or, you know, if you don't say anything and if you get rid of this baby. If you have an, if you convince Kit to have an abortion, 
we'll give you this money and you'll be set for life. So they agree and the mother, um, you know, convinces Kit to have an abortion. I mean, she's 16 years old and to, and they sign a, a, um, an NDA and Daisy has that in her, um, safe and she's keeping that. And she also has a video of the rape. You know, she has video of the drugging of her drink and them taking her to a room and where they are all like raping her. Oh my God, it is bad. And so watching the video, Kit recognizes Boone, his laugh and stuff. So Boone is her best friend and Boone was there. So she gets very upset with Boone. It's like, you were there. You saw this happening. He did not take part. He had nothing to do with it except for the fact that he was there. But how could he not speak up? You know, how could he not say anything about what happened? Well, Boone was also suffering from his own torments. He is a couple, he's like one year older than um, Kit. So he's in a one class higher than Kit. Um, and, um, or maybe it's two, I'm sorry. I think it's two classes higher than Kit, which it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, he was there and they were their best friends. So he was, he, he knew Kit and he knew that she was always being made fun of for being chubby. And, you know, Boone was going through his own things. He was being tormented for being gay. And I mean, it was just bad, you know, like quote unquote gay bashing from the nineties, you know, it was horrible stuff that was happening to him. And he had his own things he was dealing with. His parents didn't know that he was gay. He hadn't came out the closet yet. So he didn't want to put more attention to himself or bring more attention to himself by coming, by stepping up and doing the right thing and admitting what he saw. He, so he felt bad for not doing that. And he saw Kit in a shop, a coffee shop one day, and he came over and sat with her and they had it. And he was like, Hey, I remember you from school, blah, blah, blah. And then they became like best friends since then. And Kit's like, we've been best friends for so long. You never once thought to tell me. And he said that he didn't want to ruin their friendship because they have gotten so close. So that's, that sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. So Kit is like, well, I want you to do this one last thing for me. And you have to, you know, promise me that you'll do this. And I can't say that I will forgive you. And I can, but I, you know, I don't want to be your friend anymore. We're not friends, but please do this thing for me. And he's like, I'll do anything for you. Please anything to make it right. So we kind of stop with that background. Um, we already know John's background. I mean, obviously he's a douche. <laughs> he, he's, this is not the first time that he's done this. When he, when they lived in Colorado, him and his wife, Daisy, when they lived in Colorado, they had a stalker and she wasn't really, st I guess what it, what it seems like is that she wasn't really stalking. Like I'm stalking you because you're a celebrity. No, he raped her too. And she was also pregnant and the same thing happened. Like she was paid to have an abortion and to, you know, be quiet. So yeah, so he's, and then when it comes, you know, we find out that he's just done this a lot throughout his life, which is terrible. Um, and then Daisy's background, she is from rich she's from money. Her parents, it's her parents' money. Her dad, he owns ski resorts and he gets his money that way. And of course he's, she's daddy's little girl. So it's like where, you know, I mean, obviously they're paying everybody to hush. Actually, the father doesn't know about the hush money. Um, it's the mother that's behind all of the hush money stuff and keeping things, you know, quiet and protecting the family and all that mess. And Mal, she is the detective working the case. And we don't really, it doesn't, we don't really um, find out a whole lot about her. We just, you know, we, we, met, we know that she's married and her husband is suffering from dementia and it's progressing fast and her, it's so fast that her husband, um, you know, he's retired and he wants to go on this like medical end, um, medical end of life thing. So it's where, you know, he's like requesting to die medically 
so that he doesn't suffer and so that his wife doesn't suffer um, because once the Alzheimer's kicks in, he's not going to be able to do anything for himself. Like he already doesn't remember things. It's, it's just getting progressive worse and they talk about how you know we'll talk about this tomorrow we'll talk about it in the morning and stuff let me finish this case and we'll talk about it after that and then we never go back we don't really find out what happens we just know that that's where they are with that so now we talk about the revenge part of everything so kit she we she's very upset you know and she's part of a group of she has a bunch of friends everybody loves her she's a good person um, her and Boone they belong to a Dungeons and Dragons team and they also do theater and they do plays and stuff so Kit has actually been posing as the green-eyed mystery Mia written Mia what is her name Re Re reader Mia Re Ritter <laughs> um, She's been posing as Mia, which is the seductive person in the bar that John meets. And she's been, you know, seducing him. And one night she, you know, she seduces him into going up to her B&B. Her B &B, and, you know, he's obviously been drugged. <laughs> he can't. He's like telling the truth about stuff. And he then he stops and he's like wait a minute no he's like he's telling the truth about his whole position at work how he got screwed out of being the COO because of affirmative action and what he was told and stuff so he's talking about this guy um who is getting his the position that he was promised and he's upset about that and how he hired a PI for it so Mia aka Kit is you know seducing him it's like well come you know they're getting hot and heavy and like, come on let's go upstairs to my bnb so he can like barely walk and they go upstairs and they kiss and everything and he doesn't know what goes on we don't really find out what happens until the end of the book but this is you know second half so this is what we're going to find out so what happened was he wakes up and he his you know his penis is all sticky and his butt anus area is burning so it looks and then he has like a hole in his um, arm where it looks like a needle incision so it's the scene is set up as if he's been raped himself <laughs> and he's like drunk and vomiting and just doesn't know what's going on he's so disheveled he leaves the hotel or the bar area and he goes, you know, he gets in his, he hails a cab and he goes to the emergency room and he sits in the emergency room and Daisy comes, his wife, to pick him up. And he's made this whole thing out like he got, you know, beat up or he got, you know, attacked and he went to the emergency room and the doctor said, I'll be fine, yada, yada, yada. And Daisy's like, something's going on. Like, I'm not stupid, but, you know, she's the happy-go-lucky wife, so I'm going to go with it. I love my husband. And, you know, he's still being followed. The photographer is taking photos of him. And um, he goes to work the next day. And because this is like two o'clock in the morning, he goes to sleep and goes to work the next day. He's not allowed to go into his office. He has to go straight to the boss. And he goes to the boss and Henry is there. Remember, Henry is who he, who he was sitting in the bar with in part one. And Henry alerted him, hey, you know, heads up, you're not going to be the COO, it's going to be this other guy, affirmative action. Here's the PI you should hire to find dirt on him. And um, because, you know, and then he, so John did agree to, you know, he told the PI that he wanted to dig as much dirt and set him up because the PI couldn't find the dirt that, you know, would be like, hey, this isn't a good guy for COO. So John was like, make it a bad guy situation. So he gets called into the work and, or into the boss's office and what's in the boss's office. So Henry's sitting in the boss's office and there's a whole bunch of photos of what happened last night um, that were delivered to the company. So it shows pictures of him with Mia. It shows pictures of Mia, you know, straddling him. It shows pictures of two guys, you know, in bed with him. And it, there's just, it's like bad. And then they find the, 
the um, information and the thing that he signed with the PI on how to find dirt on the 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 um the person that they want to hire and it's just it's bad for him he gets fired like on the spot and it's like wow and it's to the point where he can't get anything out of his office he can't even get his car out of the garage he's like security will go get your car and they will pack your stuff and you will have your stuff and it's pouring down rain they call security security kicks him out to the curb like literally and then they drive his car around and they give him his box of stuff and he's gone and it's just it's hilarious it's because you know this guy is such a jerk and it's so hilarious that this is you know happening it's like the best a part of the book almost um and so that's John and Daisy. Meanwhile, she's getting all of these threats, like these Chucky notes and letters still. And it's, it's like getting crazier and crazier. So she actually calls the girl in Colorado and was like blaming her. I know this was you. I know you did this. And, and you, how dare you stalk us again and use Chucky and Brett and my baby. And the girl is like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so she's like that, you know, and the girl is also like, and I'm also recording this conversation and you're also breaking the silence, the silent, you know, order because you aren't supposed to contact me and I'm not supposed to contact you and this call is being recorded. So be careful. So that happens. And then, um, as far as Boone, um, well, I talked about Boone, his background, you know, he's, and he was in the closet his parents still don't know, like he still won't tell his parents about it, about, you know, him being a gay man. So I, you know, you feel bad for him too, because his parents are, I don't know, like just in denial of it. And he won't, he doesn't want to tell them like, Hey, no, I'm really gay. So Daisy and well, let's get to the meat of the revenge happening. So Daisy and John go to Vanessa and Haruto's house, the glass house for dinner. So this is the night, the Halloween night where the murder supposedly happened. Um, they go to the glass house for dinner and, uh, Daisy brings a pie and some flowers and they ring the doorbell and they see Vanessa dressed as, you know, in a devil costume. And she's no longer pregnant. So they're frozen. Daisy's frozen because she's like, where's your baby bump? And John is frozen because he's like Mia. And he is furious because remember, he just got attacked and he believes this is all Mia. So he's furious because of that. Daisy is just dumbfounded because it's like, what happened to your baby? And Vanessa's like, oh, you mean the baby bump? Yeah, prosthetics are great, aren't they? And it's just, wow, moment for both of them. She, and they're like, we're leaving. And she's like, no, I insist you come in. So they come in and they have drinks. And Daisy, or excuse me, Kit is telling them all about what's happening. And she's like telling them straight up, like, you, I was your maid. I was in your house. I know what you did. I saw, you know, the, I have copies of the video of what happened that night and they, and she plays it for them. And, you know, I, I know about the, um, the hush clo you know, the hush money and the, the non-disclosure document. And I know everything. So what you're going to do is give me $900,000. You're going to transfer it into my account and you you know that's that and daisy's like don't do it and no no daisy's like do it and john is like no i'm not going to do it i'm not going to give her money because she's going to keep coming back for more and daisy's like you don't have a choice so they actually end up doing that and you know kit is like this is all being recorded there's cameras in the house there's a camera on me um this is this is it well, actually, no, she doesn't tell them that there's a camera on her, but the cameras are all in the house and the house is wired and it's being, it's on a live feed right now. 
And so they agree to give her the $900,000 and they leave. And John is like extremely mad. He is so furious, so hot. He's thinking to himself, he's like, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to murder her. I'm going to do all of these things. And, um, you know, then they leave and Daisy, they get home and Daisy starts packing a bag. And John's like, where are you going? She's like, I'm going, I'm getting away from you. I'm leaving you because how dare you, you know, this is happening. And this isn't the first time. This isn't the second time either. Are there more? And he can't answer her. So she packs the bag and she leaves. He's like, where are you going? She's like, none of your business. And she gets in the car and she just goes. And, uh, yeah. So she also found out about him being fired and stuff and why. So <laughs> she just leaves. And then you don't really hear anything else. And you just, John, he's drunk. He's drinking, 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 drunk, stinking, drunk, bad. He gets in his car because he wants to kill Kit. And he gets in his car and he goes to the glass house. And he's waiting for the perfect moment to go in there and kill her. And he sees a murder happening. Well, he sees a, a car pull up with a guy in like a raincoat and sneaks into the house then you hear this piercing scream and it's glass and then you see two people coming out with the carpet and they load it into kit's car this yellow subaru and they peel off and john is like oh my god she just got killed by somebody else <laughs> so let me lay low and not do anything so then we know the rest, you know, they pull into the, the silo, the, the, um, the river front and the, you know, the, the dead factory, the dead silos and stuff where the bridge is and under that. And they throw the carpet into the water and they throw the, um, drive the car into the river. So, all right. So all of that. And here is the wow factor of everything that's the, it's like twists upon twists here. Um, so Kit's missing, officially missing, and they are trying to actually still find Boone. They're, well, they're looking for Boone, the police, because they want to question him some more and they can't find him. And, you know, they're tracing steps of what's going on and, Comes to find out, they get the CCT the CCTV footage from the glass house all the way to the bridge, and they find they they trace the car to this area, and they see that there's another car there, and they run they zoom in and they run those plates. So this is the affair that was going on at the same time. They run those plates and they find out who the plates belong to, the lawyer. So they go see the lawyer, and the lawyer and they're like asking the lawyer questions. And the lawyer doesn't want to talk first because it's a judge that she's having an affair with and it would be really bad. But she does talk and she's like, listen, we'll give you statements, but can this please be, you know, private and not, you know, I'm private and not let it get out. And the, and the detective Mal, she's just like, you know what, there's a missing woman. I don't care about your affair with the judge. You know, what's going on? What did you see? So she tells everything and everything starts to come together for Mal and you know she has the river dragged and they find the Subaru and they find Kit's diary in the Subaru it was in a plastic bag along with her phone in the glove compartment and they find the carpet and there's no body in the carpet but the divers do see that there is a body in the river so it could be Kit it could be Boone we don't know it seems too simple to be Kit or Boone, right? Um, but it could be. So further, you know, things are going on. And we're, we're, this is where we're learning more about the background history of these characters. And the divers are able to get the body out. And it's a woman with silver hair. And it's not, it's an old lady. The nose has been eaten. And, you know, the body is starting to corrode for being in the water for so long. And they're like, this is not Kit. <laughs> this is not Boone. Who is this? So earlier in the book, there was a silver alert, a missing woman with dementia or Alzheimer's. And, you know, she had been missing for like a month. It was her. So they assumed that she'd wandered off and fell into the water and drowned. So where is Kit? 
where is Boone? Boone comes forward because he sees it all happening on on the news. He comes forward and he tells the truth and gives all the information. He talks about what happened the night that John was drugged. So nothing happened to John. They just put some st sticky substance on his penis and they put um, icy hot <laughs> on his on his um, anus to make it to make him seem like he had all that happening. And they actually took the hole that was in his arm. They took blood from him. Okay. Because Boone says everything that happened at the glass house was a setup. It was all fake. Mia had been going to, they have a, their D and D group, which is also their theater group. Um, somebody works at the blood bank. So Mia has been giving, not Mia, Kit has been giving her blood a little bit at a time over the last six months, enough to whereas she would have enough blood to make a blood scene splatter because Boone also works in TV. He's a producer and he knows, he, he's learned, <laughs> he learned how to, how to create a crime scene through Hollywood. So he like tells her how to do that and he helps her he doesn't help her with the crime scene he just he remembers that he told her how to do it and so she did that with her own blood and the blood she got from John so she put the blood on the murder weapon the supposed murder weapon her shoes like she planted everything she planted the crime scene there was no crime it was a fake crime scene <sighs> which I think is awesome but why risk your like can you go to jail for that um, and this is like the best case of revenge because nobody actually got hurt except for, you know, obviously the crime, the real crime of her being gang raped, but it was enough to bring John and Daisy in and Boone just talks about how he helped her move, you know, they put on slickers and helped her move the carpet into the car and he got real concerned when she wanted to dump her Subaru. He helped her dump the Subaru. He got really like, this is beyond unreal. Like you're going to get hurt here. But he had promised her. That's what he promised her that he would help her with because of him not coming up, so, uh, speaking up about the gang rape. So he promised her that he would help her with that. So he helped her with that. And then he split because he got freaked out and he split and he came back because he saw, you know, that she got murdered on the news, but she actually didn't get murdered. So we come to wraps with that and it's like, all right, well, where really is Kit? Kit's gone. <laughs> so they actually take John in and Daisy in and her parents in for the actual crime that happened, you know, when Kit was 16 years old, the gang rape. And that kind of ends there. And the other part is Kit is in Indonesia on the beach and she sees everything on the news and the American news and she's living her best life. You know, there are her $900,000 on the beach and she takes a photo and she does her little hashtags and she says that she thinks she knows Boone will see. So she actually forgives Boone and she invites Boone to, um, come over to her next destination where they can get together um because that that was the message in her hashtag it was like you know um hashtag pops village and he knew right away what that meant and he knew that she forgave him and they were going to be friends again and that's kind of how the book ends and she tells the whole thing in her diary her diary is what we were reading and that's what the cops got and that's where we are with that and I guess I don't feel like I do this book justice of how I talked about it I know I'm doing this show to just talk about what I've read um, I'm not doing a book review per se I'm just talking about what I've read my perspective of the book it is this one was a little bit challenging because there were so many characters and there were so many twists and turns going on but I do enjoy, you know, talking about these books. I don't have anybody to really talk to um, about the books that I'm reading. I do talk to, you know, Rob about them, but he's like, oh, wow, you know, okay. And 
I don't know, I get excited. So I just I came up with the idea of just talking to you guys, doing a show about this. And this is just a, a place for me to talk about what I've been reading and, um, you know, I'm doing the Digicast thing. So I appreciate everybody who has been listening, everybody who has been following us and just being part of the Digicast world. I truly appreciate it. Um, I'm Sherry's Joy and I am part of the Digicast. You can find us on YouTube, the Digicast One. You, we have a blog, the digicast.substack.com. We're on Flipboard, just search for the Digicast. We have a Facebook, the Digicast, Instagram, the Digicast, Spotify, the Digicast, and we have an affiliate page or Amazon, Amazon affiliate link, rather. It's it's in the description below. I again thank you all for listening. We truly appreciate everything. If you have any suggestions or any, you know, comments or any kind of, I don't know, ideas or anything that I can do to improve this podcast, or if you have any ideas or anything that you would like for me to read and discuss, please send them to me. I do have a recommendation for my next book, which is called Good in Bed by Jennifer Weiner. Um, W-E-I-N-E-R. So I will be starting that and that will be my next show. Uh, For now, this was book four, part two of The Maid's Diary by Laura Ann White. And I appreciate you listening. Thank you and love the world.